Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for our Liquid Web webinar uh, titled Five Options for Moving to the Cloud and the Kigger why, why you should rehost, or at least why we're going to give you some opinion on rehosting that we think is qualified opinion. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm the presenter and sole presenter today. My name is Kelly Goolsby. I'm Director of Solutions Architecture with Liquid Web. Uh, essentially, what that means is my team and I help our customers make decisions about moving to the cloud, uh, hosting, rehosting, and then scaling that hosting, uh, either to become a new client of Liquid Webs or to, to scale their business. Uh, but I'm industry um, sort of agnostic and, and look at how the industry is performing and just like to talk to people who are writing applications to move to the cloud, whether they end up here or anywhere. We just like to help customers make the right decision. Uh, I've been at Liquid Web uh, going on five years and been in the industry for about 20. Uh, and so hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective on, on what I do. So, and I think anyone who's been in the industry, industry for a while will understand the choices organizations are having to make now on their hosting. Uh, I will preface this by saying that COVID-19 and a big shift of the way people work has accelerated this. It's been, it's been at a fairly steady pace for the last 10 years, uh, but in the last two, we have seen a, a faster pace, especially for the bulk of technology companies who didn't build born in the cloud applications where the business wasn't born in the cloud that might have things in their own data center, uh, things that are co-located, uh, things that might be hosted with vendors. We are seeing those companies accelerate some of their their replatform or their revised application uh, uh, migration strategy uh, because of the way they're looking at office space, the way they're looking at where employees live. So all of those things accelerated a uh, movement that we know has been happening for at least the last decade. Uh, and so what those organizations tell us, and I think you'll see this is kind of broadly understood industry knowledge, that there are really about five applications five uh, uh, choices for applications that need to move to some level to the cloud or be modernized. Uh, these are our industry standard. You'll see them called different things depending on, on which consultant or which blog you look at. Uh, but in general, every strategy for moving to the cloud will rely on one of these five um, broad strategies. And there's just little sub pockets inside there, but we'll start actually on the right. Uh, which is what you know a lot of, of developers and a lot of businesses would like to do, which might be to completely replace applications. Uh, this shift uh, has been moving you know solidly for the bulk of that decade. Um, really the, the, the tip of the spear of this are SaaS applications, right? And so the one everyone knows I think is replacing Microsoft Exchange service with O365, right? That's the common sort of test case for replacing your applications. But we see that happening across sort of the, the suite of all business applications, accounting software, ERP software, you know, even file servers, uh, virtual desktops, right? A lot of things are being replaced with newer by the seat software as a service. And that's a great um, idea for some businesses. Uh, it does not certainly work for every application. And so we know that most clients though, considering a digital migration, stra migration strategy, we'll look to replace at least one or two apps entirely. Um, the next option is to rebuild, right? And so, so companies, organizations may want to, to host in a similar way to what they did, but they wanna modernize. And so they will rewrite the application from scratch. Um, it's a, a hotly contested debate on whether rebuild or replace are, are take, take longer. Uh, I would say that you know, each of those, depending on the application, depending on the number of users, uh, depending on how important it is to the business or the line of business, they can take equally long. And there's some factors that will drive that. But they're both uh, typically incredibly disruptive, right? There's a lot to be gained from either replacing or rebuilding in many circumstances. Uh, but it usually involves the most uh, disruption to business, um, you know, and, and sometimes the greatest number of employees to, to help make that transition. Uh, and probably the longest time from planning to execution to replace an application. So those two kind of fit into a bucket there on the right because they are getting the most disruptive. As we move to the left on cloud migration strategy, you'll see some of the other options. Um, one of those is revise, right? And revise can, can mean a lot of things. 
Uh, at the simplest level, it might mean just updating operating systems. Um, it might mean moving to a new version of, of an accounting software or a, a CRM software uh, that didn't hit the rebuild or replace. Uh, so it kind of falls in the middle of that continuum of cost, uh, time, um, employee engagement that need to be involved to do that. Um, typically, when you look at revising, uh, a company will also make some changes to optimize toward a new infrastructure, right? You're moving to a cloud. There are some new things that you can take advantage of for scalability, uh, for security, uh, but it does involve a bigger amount of revision, including things like operating system upgrades. And depending on where an organization is in their journey to the cloud, uh, this might not make sense because of other business factors, right? Like an application will eventually hit the rebuild or the replace cycle. But in the interim, it makes sense to, to revise it to move. But if it doesn't, um, most companies are going to look at one of the other two options, uh, which is, is replatform. So revise and replatform typically line up with, you know, either a, a pass, right? If you're moving to a platform as a service with a lot of, of different ways of doing things, you revise your application and update it. Uh, a replatform are also major modifications to move to, to a new platform. Uh, but they're not quite as disruptive as revised. So this would be moving typically to one of the hyperscale platforms to get advantage of some of their services. So you're still in an infrastructure as a service type platform, uh, but you've made some revisions to modify your application to be optimized for the new environment. So those are, are across that continuum. Uh, they typically go you know, from, from replatform being maybe the least disruptive over to replaces, right? Throwing out uh, everything and kind of starting over with a new platform. Where we want to talk today, where, where we'll go after this in the presentation is rehosting, right? You'll hear rehosting also called lift and shift. Um, a few different names for, uh, but lift and shift or rehost is typically what you'll hear, which is picking up an application, which that's the lift and moving it to a new platform, a cloud platform, uh, that may look different depending on, on the choice of vendor uh, and the technology. We're going to specifically talk today about rehosting using VMware. So that will be where I go after this. But keep in mind, uh, this could be moving to, to bare metal. I could move into some other virtualization platform. But essentially, you are making as few changes to the environment, to the networking configurations, uh, the operating systems, and even the application deployment model as possible to move it to a new host to meet some business objectives. Uh, not always, but typically, this will be the least labor intensive. Uh, it will have the shortest timeline from planning to execution uh, and be the least disruptive to, to business practices. And so that's why we're gonna talk about rehosting today. Uh, we are seeing again, this accelerated um, and you know it's, it's not new, but we have clients that wanna close real estate because they don't have people coming in the office. And so they're keeping offices open just for a small data center. And so we see more and more conversations starting around how do we rehost this? Because people don't come into the office anymore. Uh, and while that argument has made sense for a while, uh, it is becoming you know, for front and center for more organizations in the last two, two plus years. So again, we'll talk about why rehosting, what the specific benefits are to rehosting. Uh, and I'll touch a little bit um, on some of the things to consider uh, I won't call them drawbacks, but at least things you consider uh, should consider before you rehost. So these generally are some of the benefits of rehosting. Um, in no no order, they're not stack ranked here, and they'll vary by application. They will vary by sort of what the incumbent environment looks like, uh, and they'll also vary a little bit by the target environment. But in talking through each of these, um, we have seen this for years in the industry. Uh, is that clients are looking to increase the availability of important applications. Uh, this is also driven by the way people work today and, and globally distributed workforce, right? We, we rarely anymore have clients with long maintenance windows or a typical nine to five schedule uh, with everything being done online, even traditional line of business applications that used to be done in the office. High availability is more and more important. Uh, it is sort of one of the last things that a lot of people thought about when they designed their data center uh, or, you know, availability systems aren't what they used to be. Uh, the grid isn't the same in certain areas. And so there are a lot of different levels that we see organizations asking for high availability. Uh, that could be in the network, 
uh, and the power infrastructure, which are, are, you know, kind of table stakes for all of the clouds and hosting industry. Uh, but it might be also just how do we take an application uh, that isn't built for high availability today and make it highly available. And again, we have, you know, we think VMware is a great choice for that uh, in particular, but there's a lot of ways to do it, but it is one of the big drivers for moving to the cloud in general, uh, but specifically replatforming or rehosting these, these applications. Uh, one of the ones we can't forget um, is cost savings. Uh, probably should have done that last, but a lot of this is, is, is guarded by cost savings, right? And so, you know, organizations uh, typically don't want to, to make these moves unless there is a recognized cost savings. Now that cost savings may not be in, in exactly monthly costs. There are a lot of ways to consider cost savings. Uh, it can be in the number of employees that have to pay attention to that infrastructure. And so if they can supplement that with moving to a managed cloud, uh, there can be recognized total cost savings uh, very often with these applications that could be a little bit older, that cost savings comes in the form of deferred capital expenditure. So as, as hardware gets older and starts having more failure issues and apps are tied to that hardware, um, you know, companies look at, do we have to upgrade and have a big upfront expenditure with, uh, with a hardware vendor? Uh, and to do that, we're gonna, you know, be stuck in this infrastructure for longer. And so cost savings might come in that deferred CapEx, right? OpEx could change a little bit, but we save a large CapEx purchase for a lot of clients. Uh, improved performance kind of goes hand in hand with that aging infrastructure, aging servers. Um, you know, servers increase every year and what you can buy, even with supply chain issues, is always, almost always better than that hardware that's been sitting at a data center for four, five, six years. And so we, and my team try to find ways to improve that performance in the least application impactful way. So faster storage, improved network, uh, just new CPUs, right? There are a lot of ways that, that when we look at an architecture design that we can improve performance for the client without necessarily having to move to the latest and greatest on the software and a more disruptive data migration. Um, we'll do migration speed last, because uh, I think I've already mentioned it a couple of times, but improve security. Uh, sometimes this is application security. Often it is, right, that a client wants to be able to add things to their environment uh, that may not be available to them or available at their purchase level or through their VAR in their own data center. Uh, and so we can add those on. Uh, that could be anything from uh, encryption at rest to add on security, uh, intrusion prevention, um, you know, a lot of different ways to look at that, but it could also be physical security. So when we talk about this massive shift in staffing that is happening, uh, we even have people that don't want to have security guards if they're building to protect a data center anymore, or you know, worry about people having to go to co-location when they're not in the office. And so improved security can be just a cloud a data center that is able to provide security certifications so you can pick an application up, replatform it, move it to a secure data center, and improve downstream security for clients and vendors. And then of course, migration speed. Um, again, when we think about migration speed, it's not simply how long it takes to move the bits, right? Because that's dictated by the connection. Uh, and so those things take a while, but in planning, execution, post-migration steps, generally when you look at a timeline of all five approaches, uh, the lift and shift or rehosting uh, option is going to be the fastest from end to end for these clients. Uh, and still be able to be planned out, executed correctly. Very often to the actual window of data migration because of some of the tools we use uh, and that clients use in our environment, uh, it'll be the fastest total uh, time of migration when bits are moving and when servers aren't available. So when, when time is of the essence because of changing business environment, typically rehosting is the fastest way to, to maximize that time. So we will talk now specifically today about why VMware Private Cloud. And so I think this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who's been around the industry. A lot of these applications, in fact, more than half of the, the, the organizations we speak to are using VMware today. And so, you know, they're buying it from a vendor, they're putting it on purchased hardware in a co-location or in a corporate data center. And so, you know, while you may not want to update operating systems or, or um, applications, uh, VMware makes these moves very easy. Moving from one version of VMware to another 
Uh, there are a suite of tools available to assist with that. And so we can often do a version upgrade uh, from one, you know, uh, vCenter ESXi version to another as part of this lift and shift. Whether we do that or not, though, um, VMware has a, that suite of tools I mentioned to make this easier. Uh, hardware agnostic, and so we don't have to be tied to the specific kind of hardware uh, or storage or network that the client has in their data center. Uh, and we can help script and orchestrate that migration uh, for anyone already on VMware. Uh, I would mention Liquid Web also has what we believe to be a deterministic, uh, uh, highly available architecture designed for maximum efficiency. And so most of these, these re-host migrations will end up on VMware because we're able to meet those needs talked about on the other slide, right? We can improve security, uh, we can improve performance, uh, and we can speed up migration. Uh, and provide higher availability with our VMware private cloud built in a very specific manner. And so that is the reason that most, if not all of the migrations we're talking about today will end up on some version of VMware private cloud or on a hybrid. So I should mention that maybe the entire migration or rehost isn't uh, on VMware, but we're able to accommodate a hybrid solution between VMware and bare metal. And so, you know, we can try to make the environment at Liquid Web match the client's end environment as much as possible. Uh, again, to, to speed up that migration time uh, and the amount of rework that has to be done on, on a rehost. And I've probably gone faster than my allotted time today, but um, thank you for joining. I hope everyone was able to extract some benefit from this. Uh, you can find Liquid Web on all the social media listed here, so please look for us. Uh, myself, I'm not as active on social media, but you can find me, Kelly Goolsby, on LinkedIn, uh, or I'm happy to take questions anytime to my direct email. Uh, that is kgoolsby at liquidweb.com. Again, kgoolsby at liquidweb.com. So happy to talk. Will not hit you with a sales pitch. Just want to talk to people about you know, what they're considering in a digital cloud migration strategy. Uh, love to hear about hurdles and, and decisions you're trying to make. So feel free to email me and I'll be happy to set up a conversation. Thank you.